the New Balance Beacon 3 and the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind. Neither of these shoes has a traditional rubber outsole because they don't want to let anything get between you and the midsole's running experience. But which of these two fast daily trainers is the better shoe? And how do they each hold up in wet conditions? Sign to lace up these shoes and put them to the test. Ten point two one miles, eight minutes forty seven seconds per mile, one hundred and thirty six beats per minute today. Going for a run in the Under Armour Flow Velocity Win, an easy run for the most part, but I did have some strides built in there, and I had the same run the day before in the New Balance Beacon Three, another easy run, same route with some strides built into that run. So I could test these two shoes at a variety of paces head to head. And before I give you my thoughts on these two shoes, I do wanna go over some disclosures. The Beacon 3 is a pair of shoes that was sent to me for the purpose of review by Roadrunner Sports. Uh, the Under Armour Flow Velocity Win is a pair of shoes I purchased myself. But in either event, no one's paying me to make this video or to include a shoe in this battle video. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the New Balance Beacon 3 versus the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind. First, let's talk about some specs. We'll talk about the Beacon 3 first. The Beacon 3 is a 30 millimeter stack height shoe in the heel with a six millimeter drop, giving us 24 millimeters of Fresh Foam X foam in this shoe. On the outsole, there is a little bit of rubber, but I don't think it's necessarily there for traction. It's in some of the higher wear areas, so I think it's more for durability because for the most part, you're running directly on the midsole foam. There are a lot of grooves and channels cut into it, so you are getting kind of like a lug pattern in this shoe in terms of the way that they've sculpted the Fresh Foam X. Up top, we have an engineered mesh, which is very breathable, and a toe box that is nice and roomy. Things get a little bit more rigid and less breathable as you move further back along the shoe. And in the heel, you have what New Balance is calling its Ultra Heel. If you've seen the 1080 version 11 this year, it's a similar concept in terms of they have this very sculpted design with a very aggressive Achilles flare. In the 1080 version 11, a lot of people have noticed that the fit isn't quite so great in the Ultra Heel. It's a lot better in the Beacon 3 for me. I don't have quite as many problems in terms of feeling like my heel just doesn't feel like it fits all that well within the shoe. In this shoe, you also have a couple of bumpers on each side, uh, something that we've seen in a lot of shoes in trying to make sure that you're getting a lot of kind of lockdown in the heel cup without having too much structure back here. Coming in at a weight of 7.9 ounces or a weight of about 223 grams. Now let's talk about the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind. This is a 26 millimeter stack height shoe in the heel. And it does look like there's two foams in here, but it's really just one layer of foam, at least that's my understanding of it, where the top layer is black and it's colored, and then you have the white layer underneath that looks like it's a lot thinner, so it looks like it's a little bit more slammed to the ground, but you are still getting a decent amount of stack height in the heel, 26 millimeters. There's an eight millimeter drop in this shoe, giving us 18 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot of this flow midsole foam. There is no rubber on this outsole at all. Instead, what they've done is they've cut grooves and patterns into this, not quite as aggressively as they've done in the Beacon 3, but there are lots of patterns in here that are supposed to aid with grip as you're going through, for example, wet conditions. Up top, we have a Under Armour's warp material, which doesn't look the prettiest in my mind, but it is very functional. It's a breathable material that is pretty much see-through in a couple of areas, but it is a very strong material as well. Keeps everything very contained, nice and snug, and feels secure as you're running. Through the heel cup, you have a little bit of padding and a more traditional style heel. This heel cup actually fits really well. There's a little bit more structure in this shoe than there was in the New Balance Beacon 3. And this all aids for a very comfortable 
fitting, secure fitting heel. This entire package comes in at a little bit of a heavier weight than the Beacon 3 at 8.5 ounces or about 240 grams. Now, with the specs taken care of, let's talk about what it was like to run in each of these shoes. And I'll say that both of these shoes are very, very similar. I mean, looks aside, like the black uppers with the white midsoles, but their approach to either having no rubber on the outsole or a very minimal amount of rubber on the outsole, there's a lot of similarities in the approach. And there's also a lot of similarities in the result as well. Both of these, there's kind of three Fs to these shoes for me. They have firm midsoles, they're fast shoes, and they have great fit. So first let's talk about the firmness. Both of these shoes, because you're running directly on the midsole foam, what generally tends to need to happen in order to make that foam durable enough to be able to run on is that that foam tends to need to be a little bit more firm. And that's what I get in each of these shoes. Both of them have a firm sensation, but it's not like cumbersome, it's not awkward. It still feels very much like a good foam to run on, but you're not gonna get like a super springy, squishy, soft sensation as you're running in these. You're gonna feel a lot more of kind of the ground that you're running on. For me, in a good way, I like that sensation. I like having that ground feel to it. And what that means for me is that in the way that I'm using these shoes, I'm generally not gonna be reaching for these shoes if I need a recovery shoe, let's say it's the day after a very long run or day after a very tough workout. These are probably not the shoes that I'm gonna be reaching for, but if I have any of my easy runs or anything up to like a medium distance long run, this is certainly a shoe that I think can handle it, especially if you have a variety of paces involved because the second F is that these shoes are fast. I feel like these shoes can handle quick paces really well, and both of them because I know they're not the lowest shoes that you can get in terms of stack height, but I do feel like they feel very planted. And again, it's that road feel that's coming in where I feel like you could take this if you had uh, a speed workout. These are both shoes that you can certainly do that. Today for my strides, I was able to get the shoes from my easy paces all the way up to about mile pace. And each of these shoes can handle that at least for shorter durations without any problem at all. And any of those paces in between, I feel like this shoe does a fantastic job at doing that. The downside is that I don't think that these shoes are great for very, very long distances. So I'm not sure that I would really want either of these shoes to run a marathon in necessarily. I think in 2021, with the new technologies that we have in terms of squishy foams that can still be fast, these firmer foams that feel a little bit more planted, a little bit closer to the ground, I don't love taking them to the marathon distance anymore. I would much rather have them for those middle distance runs to my easy day, everyday runs. Now the third F that I talked about with this shoe is the fit. I think both of these shoes fit really well, but there are again, slight differences here uh, between the two shoes. I feel like the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind fits much better in the heel area. It just feels like it sticks onto the back of your foot and it's very comfortable. On the downside, I feel like I could use a little bit more space up front at the top of the shoe. So from like the ankle back, this shoe feels fantastic in terms of fit, but from the ankle forward, I'm looking for a little bit more room. And so while I do enjoy going fast in this shoe and I don't mind taking it to middle distances of long runs, the faster I need to go, the shorter I'm gonna kind of want the run to be. I went with the size nine in both of these shoes and I feel like that's the right size for each of them. But I feel like just the way that this Under Armour shoe is designed, there's just not as much kind of space up in the toe box. On the other hand, I feel like the Beacon 3 is kind of the opposite where the heel is a little bit loose and I feel like it could use a little bit more precision back here. Uh, it's, it's acceptable, it's good, but it's still sometimes I feel like there's a little bit looseness. These bumper pads perhaps maybe are not doing quite as much work as they're intended to be doing. So this area leaves a little bit to be desired, but the front of the shoe, the toe box area is really nice. And even when I'm running at faster paces, I feel like I have not only enough space in the toe box to run a longer distance at a faster pace, but I also feel like I still have enough secureness in here with the midfoot cage and the way that the engineering mesh is working in the toes of the shoe where it feels like the front half of this shoe feels much better. Like if I could combine these two shoes and have like the front of the Beacon 3 and the back of the Flow Velocity Wind, I feel like I'd have a, just a superb feeling 
upper for a fast daily trainer. Now let's talk about how each of these shoes did in wet conditions. Uh, for the Beacon 3, it was lightly raining the entire time I went out for a run in this shoe. And so I had a lot of wet conditions to run through the entire time. And the Beacon 3 did a, a, an exceptional job. At no point did I feel like uh, I was running on a shoe that didn't have rubber on the outsole. I didn't feel like it was any different in terms of traction and my ability to be able to push off as I was putting in more effort for my stride. So I have all the benefit of doing away with as much rubber as possible without feeling like I had lost any traction as a result of that. Similarly, the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind also does a fantastic job, a surprisingly good job in really wet conditions. It was supposed to rain for this run. It didn't rain though, uh, but it was windy. And so a lot of the water still gets washed up from the lake onto the areas where I'm running along the lakefront here in Chicago. And so I still had plenty of wet areas to run through. And again, even when navigating turns, going up and down, not there's not a ton of hills around here, but even going up and down some slight elevation changes, I didn't feel like I was missing anything in the flow velocity winds in terms of traction on the outsole by getting rid of all that rubber. The benefit being you get to get rid of all that rubber, it saves a little bit of weight and it prevents that rubber outsole from kind of deadening or changing or dampening any of the effect that you're getting from the midsole foam. So I feel like when there is a less rubber on the outsole, you are getting a better chance at experiencing what that midsole foam is intended to be. So both of these did exceptional jobs. I still feel like if I were running in hilly grassy terrain and it were wet, these are not shoes that I would really want to be running in, but that's not something that I typically do. And if I am gonna be doing that, I'm usually gonna be reaching for a trail shoe to ensure that I'm getting really good traction. But as far as road running goes in the conditions that I put it in, I feel like these were really good wet weather condition tests and both of these shoes passed with flying colors. So with that all being said, it's time to choose a champion of these two shoes between the Beacon 3 and the Flow Velocity Wind. I think I'm gonna give it to the Flow Velocity Wind. I feel like both of these shoes do the things that they're intending to do really, really well, but I feel like the Flow Velocity Wind's doing all of those things just a little bit better. I like the ground feel that you're getting from the Flow Velocity Wind. I like the firmness to it. I also like kind of the responsiveness that you're getting from that midsole foam as well, especially when you're changing paces, going from easy pace and cranking it up to a faster pace, getting to 5K and even one mile efforts in the shoe. I just feel like it does so really easily. It's very agreeable when it comes to picking up the pace. And then when you're getting to that pace, it feels really nice. The only downside being, I do wish there was just a little bit more room, but for the most part in terms of the springy sensation that I'm looking for when I'm dealing with a firm shoe that's lower planted to the ground, I feel like I'm getting it in a really pleasant way here without it feeling like a race flat. And so it's striking a nice balance between like pure performance, but also like daily, everyday livability. I feel like the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind is doing the better job. So that's my champion for this battle. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about either of these shoes, or if you completely disagree, I'd love to hear about that too. Or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do just about every day right here on YouTube, and I'd love to interact with you live. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hope you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?